And welcome back again, uh, Learn to Code Nation. Thanks a lot for following. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope I've been helpful. This is part of a larger series on using appsettings.json files in .NET Core console applications, mostly because they're unsupported by default, which is interesting. Uh, anyway, so in this case, in this particular video, we're going to talk about user secrets. Okay, you will need a couple of dependencies here. Let's take a peek at those. You're going to need configuration command line. That's from a previous video. Configuration environment variables. That's also from a previous video. Configuration JSON. Configuration.user secrets. That's the key to this one here. And then logging. We've got a couple of dependencies so we can log some information out to the console. Now, the idea behind this is that users can have secrets files locally that have different values that don't get checked in okay uh, this can be useful across teams when you have multiple teams with different uh, local SQL servers and, and things like that right that have different um, different connection strings and other things right uh, maybe you're sharing uh, some keys across the organization but you don't want those checked in you can use user secret files for that in the next video we're going to talk about Azure Key Vault uh, the interesting thing about that is user secrets is kinda like the dev box side of Azure Key Vault Azure Key Vault is really how you want to manage a uh, secrets in deployment so let's dive into this one here uh, so what we're doing is we're ultimately overriding this app settings dot first setting and so if we take a look at our app settings Jason here we are it's uh, first value okay that's the default value uh, then it actually has an override at the environment level but then it has another override at the command line level but technically we want to override it at the user secret level now the way you get to user secrets is you're gonna right click on the project and you're going to say manage user secrets Okay, it's going to pull up a file here, and the syntax is the same as the command line arguments. It's object, colon, and then potentially another object, colon, ultimately, property name. And so the value here is secret value. Now, what we're going to do is in the program, we're going to stack these, right? We're going to load the two JSON files, the defaults, environment specific, then we load the environment variables, then the command lines over arguments override, and then ultimately, finally, we load user secrets. And basically, you begin just overriding these values based on what's more important than the other. Or more specifically, it often works out specificity, right? Uh, or typically, that's the most intuitive. So this is the least specific. These are just default values configured in development. This is the next most specific. We're dealing with environment level values, right? This is the next most specific. So we're dealing with environment variables during runtime. This is now even more specific because we said, you know, I know what the environment variables are. I got it. But technically, on this particular run, I want these command line values. Then we're saying, hey, there's some user secret values that technically I want those to override everything, right? And so that's what happens here. So if we were to execute this guy, then what we would get in the log is secret value, right? Because ultimately it got overridden by multiple tiers of um, configuration. And so that's how you use user secrets. Again, you'll have to figure out if they even make sense for you. They don't have to be used. It's just an option. I can tell you with team development, it can be very useful. So, hey, thanks for watching. Once again, I look forward to hanging out with you next time, and uh, until then, happy coding.